Welcome all to this our celebration of Pinkus Gritter's 90th birthday. What a wonderful pleasure it is. On behalf of the Cape of the South African Holocaust and Genocide Foundation and my colleagues Tali Nates and Mary Klug, we welcome our guest of honor, Pinkus Gritter, our guest speaker, Stephen Smith, trustees from the three different centers, and you, our friends from around the world. Over the past six months, all three centers have been very busy introducing Pincus to our learners through dimensions in testimony. The results have been unbelievable, as most of the students feel that Pincus is right there with them in the room. Pincus, we have been collecting special wishes and thoughts for you from the learners. And if I may, I would like to share some of them with you and our audience. I quote. Happy birthday, Pincus. I just want to say thank you for being such an inspiration to me. You've showed that with faith and motivation, I can make it through anything. I appreciate you so much. What stood out for me was definitely being able to talk to Pincus Gutter. I thought that was clever and interesting, being able to hear all about World War II in the words of a person that was actually there. I was inspired to really be kind and inclusive. Dear Mr. Pincus, I wish I was there at the exact time to help you and your family escape Germany and live with my family. Dear Pincus, you are very brave and strong. It is horrible with what you went through, but it is over. Your story is amazing. And it was very nice of you to share it. Thank you for being so open about what happened to you. And you are very courageous in moving on. I admire your resilience and handling all the hardships. Listening to Mr. Pinker's Gritter replying to our questions made me think a lot about my life, especially when he said he doesn't believe in hate and he doesn't condone it. Happy 90th birthday, Pincus. Hope you are having an amazing day. Your Holocaust surviving story inspired me to stand up against racism and inequalities I've noticed around me. Your story has motivated me to never give up. Pincus, this is just a small, small glimpse into the hundreds of messages that we've collected for you. During the course for our audience, during the course of um, the Zoom lecture, we will be switching off your microphones and your cameras. Um, if you have any questions or if you'd like to wish Pinker's happy birthday, please place them in the chat room at the bottom of your screen. And now it's over to you, Orly. Thank you, Heather. This is a song about a little boy who watches a tree in which there are many birds. The birds start flying away when winter starts coming because they go wintering in warmer climates. So the boy looks at the tree and he thinks, well, somebody's got to keep company to this tree because otherwise it's going to be all alone right through winter. So he approaches his mother, and this is what he says. Eufen weg steht der Boy, steht er eingebeugen. Alle Vögel von dem Boy sehnen sich zerfleugen. Drei kein Misrech, drei kein Marif, in der Rest kein Dorren. In Gelass den Boim allein, Hefker vor dem Storren. So give to the mama mine, sollst mir gar nicht stern. 
weil ich Mama eins und zwei bald auf Eugel werden. Ich will sitzen auf dem Bäum, in will ihn verwiegen, über Winter, mit der Treist, in der schönen Niegen. Ja, am Tari, Tari, ja, am Tari, Tari, ja, am Tari, Tam, ja, am Tari, Tari, ja, am Tari, Tari, ja, am Tari, Tari, Tam. This is a song about a little boy who watches a tree in which there are many birds. The birds start flying away when winter starts coming because they go wintering in warmer climates. So the boy looks at the tree and he thinks, well, somebody's got to keep company to this tree because otherwise it's got to be all alone right through winter. So he approaches his mother, and this is what he says. Auf dem Weg steht der Boy, steht er eingebeugen. Alle Vögel von dem Boy sehnen sich zu fliegen. Drei kein Misrech, drei kein Marif, in der Rest kein Dorn. In Gelass den Boim allein, Hefker vor dem Storm. So geh zu dem Mama mein, sollst mich gar nicht stern, weil ich Mama eins und zwei bald auf Eugel werden. Ich will sitzen auf dem Bäum, in will ihn verwiegen, über Winter mit der Treist, in der Schönem liegen. Ja, am Tari, Tari, ja, am Tari, Tari, Jan Tari Tam, Jan Tari Tari, Jan Tari Tari, Jan Tari Tari Tam. This is. Thank you for affording me the very great pleasure of saying a few words on this very special occasion to celebrate the milestone birthday of dear Pincus. I'm doing so in my capacity as a shotgun, a matchmaker, a role that will shortly become quite clear to you. In August 1998, when our keynote speaker, Stephen Smith, was in Cape Town on a working visit to assist us in the planning of our Cape Town Holocaust Center's exhibition, which was to open the following year, he conducted interviews with some of our Cape Town survivors, Miriam, Ella, and Henya, for a film of survivor testimony, which was to be screened with the center's permanent exhibition. I recall telling Stephen then that it was such a very great pity that he was not able to also interview survivor Pinkus Gutta, a former Cape Townian who had moved to Canada in the 1980s, but still had ties with Cape Town, having a holiday apartment in Bantry Bay, where he and his wife Dorothy spent time during the summer months. I told Stephen then that Pinkus's testimony would have made the most powerful contribution to our testimony film. That evening, Stephen and I attended a lecture at the Kaplan Center at the University of Cape Town. And lo and behold, the first people we encountered were Pincus and Dorothy. I introduced Pincus to Stephen and Stephen to Pincus. And as it goes in the movies, it was love at first sight. Hence, rightfully earning for myself the title of Shatchan. Pinkus, I know that Stephen will shortly be speaking about your wonderful and mutually treasured relationship over the ensuing years, so I will leave it at that. But you will recall that Stephen interviewed you that very next day 
And the testimony you gave then and your very powerful message has, over the years, made such an important contribution to the fulfillment of our center's vision and mission. We were so very thrilled to have you and Dorothy with us at the opening of our center in August 1999 and appreciate your participation in our programs whenever you were in Cape Town. And now, as we have seen, through the magic of new dimensions in testimony technology, we have the ongoing privilege of having your presence and your powerful message available permanently within the walls of our center. And so dear Pincus, I wish you a hearty muzzle tov and extend to you a, our best wishes for your continued good health and life's fulfillment. Thank you. It is such a joy to join everyone from around the world uh, in this extremely touching and moving event, celebrating Pinchas, your uh, 90th birthday. Um, even though you behave like, you know, a 50 year old, I must say it is happy 90th birthday. And, and of course, our relationship goes a very long way. And I want to share a few slides just to, to recap some of the highlights of uh, that uh, relationship. Uh, you were the one that opened our center, the uh, Johannesburg Holocaust and Genocide Center, still a building site, opening it on the plaza, there you were, you and Dorothy, opening it, engaging with survivors, engaging with everyone from the city of Johannesburg, all the VIPs, all the ambassadors, everyone just came to listen to you. And it was a wonderful, wonderful honor for us that you were the one to open our center. But of course, your story goes with me wherever I go. I just returned from Poland on Monday, and there you were with me, with a group of young people that wanted to hear about your story, about, about being born in Łódź, about your time in Warsaw, about uh, uh, your time in the Warsaw Ghetto, which you so generously share with all of us in writing, in films, and in testimony. Uh, of course, sharing your testimony so many times in the last 20 years and more that I'm going with groups to Poland in Majdanek, sharing it in, in Theresienstadt about the miracle of your liberation and all your wonderful stories. So your story does not only stay in South Africa, your story goes wherever I go wherever we go from the three centers in South Africa. When the center opened, it was very important for us to include your story in all our exhibitions, in all our films. You see yourself here in the opening film, but you appear in many of the 24 films that we included in the center. Uh, the education team is using your story everywhere with every group and of course the exhibition tells your story in many of the spaces if it is about the ghettos if it is about the camps if it is about life before about uh, your hasidic family all that and more is being shared at all those places and it is delightful to see how students and teachers and the, and, and the public is reacting to your stories. And then many spoke about it, about the new dimensions in testimony and how that plays a huge role. But maybe let me add that the three centers in South Africa also included your wonderful, impactful story in our portraits of survival, uh, of Holocaust survivors that settled at a time in South Africa. Uh, and we were very honored that Stephen also contributed uh, a forward to, to, this, uh, to this volume. It doesn't stop there. Uh, 
your voice appears in music composed uh, for our exhibition by Philip Miller, and many of your songs are there with us. Your testimony is used for poetry workshops and much of the very emotional description of the selection in Majdanek or your time in other camps or, uh, or your very deep reflections are now a base for poetry writing for students around South Africa. So what can we say, uh, Pinchas, on your 90th birthday? Happy, happy birthday. May you be healthy and joyful and enjoy your family. Enjoy your, your uh, time with your great grandchildren. Enjoy your time with everyone that loves you or your friends around the world. And may I just say, finally, that you impacted hundreds of thousands of uh, students and other people around the world. And for me, this is the gift you give humanity and all of us. Thank you so much for all you do. Happy birthday, Pimhas. Well, it's, um, it's quite something to follow those wonderful words from so many of my former and present colleagues. And yeah, Pinkas, first of all, from me, a very, very happy birthday. Thank you for the personal friendship over the years. Thank you for everything that you have done to give me both remembrance and hope, which I know is part and parcel of how you think. Uh, so it has been a very, very special journey for me, but I can think of no better person to speak about you in more detail than Dr. Stephen David Smith, who is our guest speaker this evening. I'm sure you will agree. You have been having a conversation with him for years. As Myra indicated, that conversation started back in 1998 and in fact has been continuing ever since. And our conversation with Stephen has been going for at least as long as that, if not longer. Because if it weren't for Stephen, I don't think that Myra would have had the inspiration to have started or the temerity to have started the first Holocaust Center in South Africa. It was Stephen's work and James' work and his dear mother, Marina's work and his father's willingness to be part of that journey that created the first Holocaust Center in Britain, Beth Shalom. And it is that center which was the inspiration behind the establishment of the Cape Town Holocaust Center, as it was then Cape Town Holocaust and Genocide Center, and of course, now the three centers in uh, South Africa, which do such important work. So Stephen has been part, a friend to us. He was a trustee of the center. He has been um, a patron of the South African Holocaust and Genocide Foundation. And his work has impacted upon people across the world. Like Pinchas, he has touched so many, many, many people. It has been an extraordinary career, a career where he has dedicated his, his world to Holocaust education, to genocide prevention through the Aegis Trust that he established in 2000, and through his incredible work on the ground with survivors, getting to know survivors, talking to survivors empathetically. He is a master of conversation. And it's that which has taken him on this extraordinary career to the Shoah Foundation in California at the university there, where he still is the emeritus um, executive director, even though he spent 12 years um, bringing that 
um, incredible archive into the public sphere through his incredible work, not only in the design of education programs like the Eyewitness series, but also in this incredible uh, dimensions in testimony, which has transformed our world um, in terms of the future. So I call Stephen a futurist. I think he is somebody who has the future in mind all the time. He's always reinventing himself and he's always taking his experience and making of it something different and something even more meaningful. Stephen has, of course, um, visited our shores many times. He has been such a friend to us. And I know that certainly the whole process of Dimensions in Testimony, which is now added such a, if I say, dimension to the experience of anybody visiting the centers, that has been his gift through us with Pinchas, with his incredible friendship with Kim Pinchas, his detailed understanding of Pinchas's story, his walking with Pinchas through uh, his filmmaking, through his um, incredible film that he did with Pinchas in um, Maidanik, which is quite the, one of the most moving documentaries you will ever have watched. Uh, and I urge any of you who have not watched it to see it. Um, that is, um, no wonder it was an award-winning documentary and that both Pinchas and Stephen have been recognized for that contribution. Stephen has many, many uh, awards. He has uh, honorary doctorates. He even has a, he is a member of the British Empire, Order of the Member of the British Empire. He is, uh, has been acknowledged uh, internationally for his work in Holocaust remembrance. He was even instrumental in setting up um, the Holocaust Education Trust. He was the first chairman there in Britain, which oversees the Holocaust Remembrance Day, which he was also involved in creating. So the list is endless. But above all, Stephen Smith is a human being, a compassionate, empathetic, and wonderful person who has, in fact, through his involvement with us and through with his involvement through Pinchas enriched all our lives. And it is with that that I ask Stephen, please, to introduce and talk about our beloved Pinchas and the conversation that you've had with him over all these years. Over to you, Stephen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pinkers. Happy birthday to you. Pinkers gets to sing to me really often, so this is my one moment, Pinkers, where I get to sing back. You know, it was a blustery day, I seem to remember. And your old green BMW that was falling apart at the seams rattled up the street and you climbed out and you shut the door we'd met briefly at the event that Myra talked about but really this was the first moment we were together and you came in and you sat down and we were doing this interview in somewhat of a hurry because the center was due to open any day And Sean was there and he was setting, setting up the camera and the lights and the microphones and you sat down and everyone was ready. And I looked across the room and for the first time I looked into your eyes, your beautiful blue eyes that went on forever and ever and ever. We hadn't said a word. And I realized I was about to enter a whole new world. By that time, Pinkus, I, I'd interviewed many Holocaust survivors. I was just completing a PhD about Holocaust survivor testimony, so I needed to interview many Holocaust survivors. 
what unfolded in the next two hours just took me into a completely different world, a world that I had never been before, as you talked about your father, Mendel, and your mother, Helena, and your twin sister, Sabina. But I think it was mainly the fact that I'd never really been inside the home of a Hasidic family before and you took me into your home, into your kitchen, into to the goose fat on the windowsill and your father and the, the shtibel and the and that moment when you stood on the table after your Hamshi Seuda and told the stories of the Bible as a five year old and running to go and fetch the charlant on a on the Shabbos on, on, on Shabbat on the Shabbos morning. I vividly imagined being there. I had never ever been transported. It's what I came to call the magic carpet. <clears throat> the magic carpet that you ride on, which you yourself said you go on at night and travel across time and space and into a whole other world, literally taking yourself back there and the camera stopped and um, I thought wow I'd love to talk more to this guy we chatted and you said that you come to England so often and you would love to come and see me and I said of course you're welcome and I you said yes you'll come and visit and I knew that you wouldn't and then of course you did I remember sitting with you and Dorothy hi Dorothy I remember sitting with you and uh, Dorothy by the little pond at the National Holocaust Center in the UK. And uh, the doves flying around. It was a relatively hot, warm day for the United Kingdom, which, as you know, is rare. <clears throat> we were drinking tea and talking, and I think Dorothy might have wandered off to go and look at books or something. And you and I were talking, and you said, oh, it was very nice here. I'd like to... I'd like to spend some time here. Maybe you could talk about my history. I'm not a writer. And then it, and I, and I suddenly realized we were talking about maybe a book or something. And I said, you know, there's been so many memoirs about the Holocaust. This is only 1998. Little did I know how many more would be written. Um, and then you turned to me and you said, no, well, you don't understand. That day when I arrived at Majdanek, and the women went one way and the men went the other way. And I saw my twin sister walk around the building. Um, I never, you know, never saw her again. But all I remember is her long golden braid. I want you to help me find my sister. That was one of the most profound moments of trust that I've ever encountered that you thought that in somehow or other you and I could journey into history and memory, memory actually, in order to try and find the twin that you, I was going to say lost, that was taken from you, that was murdered on that day in Majdanek in May 1943. And so we went on that journey together, not one journey, but a journey which continues to this day, a journey of learning and discovery and a journey which has taken us I don't even know how many continents at least three and at this point 25 years you were just a child when I met you you were only in your 60s which is amazing so Pinkus you know I want to thank you today for that journey but I want to talk about two particular parts of it the first goodbye and the last goodbye. You know, in our very first conversation, we were in Cape Town and we were sitting on that uh, lovely patio you have that overlooks the, the water, had that overlooks the water. And um, we began to talk in that first session. I put on my little audio recorder and we began to talk with each other. 
sometime in that first hour I said to you have you been back to Poland and you said that you hadn't and I said why and you said that you didn't want to go there but you listened to all these programs in Toronto and that the programs in Polish you know um, were meaningful to you and I said okay well we're going to have to go to Poland if we're going to go on this journey and you said yes and then you said and I said what about the children and you said well they won't want to come and I said what do you mean they won't want to come of course they want to come and he said no they won't want to come I said we'll call them and of course they booked their travel or their vacations the next day and we planned our travel together and we met in London at the 45A society dinner and there you were with other survivors that had you know been with you in the camps or at least with you on the journey to England and were part of your story and then we went to Poland for what I now call the first goodbye because you had said to me I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to my parents or my twin and that you had lost all memory of your twin apart from the long golden braid and that maybe by going there maybe it would help to restore memory maybe it would be a way to say goodbye to your parents and Sabina what you had disclosed to me but had not told other members of your family in our discussions about memory and trauma and the things that we were talking about was that you found it difficult to love those who were closest to you. But you're difficult. Sorry, folks, about my internet. It's uh, I'm in my parents' house in the middle of a field in the middle of North Nottinghamshire, and uh, anyway, the internet's about the same as the Sahara Desert here. So there we were, uh, Pinkus. We were in the middle of uh, Maidanic, and the, um, you were leading. I'm sorry that we seem to have a problem with um, the video from Stephen. And I'm, ah, there he is, back again. Great. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn my video off, and this can be like the radio, folks. Uh, because I remember very clearly that you were um, going up to the mausoleum, and you have this beautiful voice when you sing your chazanut. And um, there we were, and you prayed El Malarachimim and um, Kaddish three times once for Mendel once for Helena and once for Sabina and as you did so your family Tanya and Jan and Rumi kind of closed in on you and Jan put his arms around you I'll never ever forget that moment as you were praying and the, th the five of you were just standing there so close to one another and Lauren too as you prayed and said goodbye to your family 
And then you turned away and all f six of you walked arm in arm away from that mausoleum and into the distance. And I just stood there and watched as your family was so united in that moment of grief, but also of belonging. That evening we stood out on some street in Warsaw somewhere, the trains were rattling by, it was a noisy place. And I asked you about the day and what it meant to you and you turned to me as part of what you said. And you said, Jan put his arms around me and I could feel my family all around me as I prayed and said goodbye to my family. And I felt the love. And I felt that I could love back safely. I want to thank you for sharing that moment with me, for the risks that you took, for the courage that you had, for overcoming all of those demons, which is all one can call them, in order to be able to find a place where you could be at peace as much as one can with the past, but also find a way forward in the future. It's a very powerful and touching moment. And then there was the last goodbye. The actual name of the film that we made in virtual reality. But it was also a time of conclusions in some respect because you then disclosed to me 17 trips to Poland later that you weren't intending going back and we were intending making a film at the show foundation in virtual reality and so when Garbo and Ari told me they wanted to make a film about the Holocaust and they said they want to make a film about Auschwitz I said I have a much better idea let's make a film about Majdanek and let's call Pinchas and there we were on a trip together where you were already in Poland and you were already ready to talk about um, you know, education and with the teachers for the last time at Majdanek and we had two days together going back and forward from Warsaw as you did your work with the teachers and back to Majdanek and they were long 16 hour days but in that moment as we walked around together now much more in control of the, the narrative you'd been there many times before there was a reason that we did that together in Majdanek and not you standing in a green screen in Toronto was because I knew that the raw emotions of being in those places the place where you last saw your father your mother your twin sister would never ever be diminished over time but that you could take us, all of us, on that journey through Majdanek, through those barracks, through those, that selection ground and the undressing room and the disinfection place and the, the gas chamber and into the barracks and explain to us in that place what it meant to be in that place. As Richard mentioned, it was award winning and that's gratifying, but it's not about awards. It's about the courage to tell the story. It's about the courage to stand in the place. It's about the courage to be vulnerable. And what I've learned from you is the strength of vulnerability. Because you did say goodbye to Sabina and Mendel and Helena for one last time. But what really came over was the power of the vulnerability that you were prepared to go through. You told me over and have been telling me over the last 25 years your deepest secrets, the things that trouble you most, the traumas that you have been through. You sat there, oh I have to tell our audience, when we were coming to do the Dimensions in Testimony program and we were thinking who on this planet of all the Holocaust survivors there are that are living do you think would be willing to sit day after day and answer maybe a thousand or two thousand questions who would have the patience to deal with the fact that we have no idea whether this technology will work or not who will be willing to go to places that are very vulnerable and very difficult um, to put their bear their soul for the world who will be prepared to answer honestly and with authenticity there was only one person I was going to call 
Uh, Pika, thank you for doing that, for um, coming to Los Angeles multiple times, for sitting there hour after hour as our technicians climbed on top of the rig to try and get the cameras to work while you were trying to tell the most difficult stories of your life. Thank you for being willing to answer thousands of questions, which other Holocaust survivors have now done, but not knowing whether or not it would have the impact that we saw at the beginning of this program, taking the chance to be able to tell your story and play it forward. Richard said, I was a futurist. I want to tell you, Richard, thank you. But the real futurist here is Pincus Gutter because what he was able to do was see the future of testimony and participate in that. You know, we saw on the screen um, at the beginning of this, the quote that you gave in that first Dimensions and in Testimony interview, when I asked you, why do you tell your story? You said, I tell my story for the benefit of humanity. And if only drop by drop by drop, over many years, we change just a little bit and smoothen the stone and make it less rough and less hard, then that's all the best that we can do. And for doing that day in and day out, Pinchas, which you have done with great great tenacity and resilience. Um, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to spend 20 minutes or so talking about you and your life. But honestly, after 25 years, if you gave me the rest of the evening, the stories I could tell and the insights that I could give, the things that you have taught me, um, could not only fill this evening, but many evenings besides. But just to sum up a few of them, you know, you taught me the value of family. Not just the fact that you lost or that your family was destroyed, but what you really understood by family and what you took despite the loss and the bereavement and the darkness that followed, that you really treasured family and tradition and those who surrounded you and loved you, that you were able to carry them into your present. You told me about the power of overcoming those things which otherwise might destroy you. You worked hard throughout your life to overcome the demons of the past. You stuck with who you were as a person. You were able in the middle of that to also find your purpose as a an individual not only who taught about the Holocaust, which is wonderful for those of us on this call today, but the purpose of ministering to the elderly, the purpose of ministering to the congregation through the Chazanut, which you loved, the beautiful melodies that you brought with you from the Gera Chassidim, Chassidim that otherwise may never have been heard in our shuls. The ability to be able to think about the world in which we live. I'll never forget that time in Toronto when you were on the panel with the survivors of the Rwandan genocide. And the anger that you always had about apartheid and the fact that you were living in South Africa and that you had been through what you'd been through. This sense of justice or injustice and how it cannot be tolerated and how you have said that time and time and time again and guided us and led us. But most of all, uh, Pinchas, I want to say to you how grateful I am for all that you have done for me. You are literally the person that has taught me the most about living. Well, probably next to my mom. But you're on a par, which is a good thing. Um, but the really that you taught me about living in spite of death, you taught me about the struggle you know, you and I talked about the struggle so many times and the struggle to live after all that you went through. But you also taught me about the importance to struggle for what is right, to struggle for the things that make us who we are as people and keep us on a straight path in spite of the darkness that surrounds us. I want to thank you for being not only my mentor and my teacher, but also for being my friend. You know, in the world in which we live and the work in which we do, at times it's extremely hard to be able to f continually, continually face the evil of 
those who destroy but by being my friend which you have been all of these years um, that you have really enabled me to see my purpose in ways that I probably couldn't see with well I know I couldn't see without you yeah we our relationship Pincus as you know goes up to this day I love the fact that we meet every Sunday and that we study the Torah together and that we talk about life and we kibitz and we complain and we also rejoice in the things that make us happy and so every Sunday I wake up every Sunday morning and look forward to our talks to think about the things that we're doing in our week and the things that matter the most whether we're talking about the Parsha or Maimonides or whatever we talk about on a Sunday morning those are really really precious moments to me and I will always always treasure them like I've treasured our entire our entire life so there's not much to say except for a couple of things of course first of all we know that you're not turning 90 but 91 well maybe 90 maybe 91 and you can tell everybody else that story but I celebrated your 90th birthday last year but this is just great to do it twice so you can have two birthdays every year secondly you told me that because of what you went through the birthdays have not been something that you celebrate and so for decades and decades and decades this was not the norm to celebrate your birthday which is why it's all the more important that 120 of your closest friends are here to do that right now because we are going to celebrate you and we are going to celebrate your birth and we are going to celebrate the life that you have lived you also told me you have two birthdays um, because also may the 8th the day in which you were liberated from terrorism was the day of your rebirth so what's more you're going to get two birthdays a year from now on because i want to say to you obviously as we always say every week to gesund but also bis und und fancy you're nearly there by the way just another 30 years so keep going um, and i look forward to every one of those 30 years remaining and all the joy and all the sorrow and all of the hope and all of the destiny which you have been given will all be gathered up and will continue to be a blessing not only to me but in fact to all the world you reach i love you Pinchas. i really love you uh first of all I would like to thank Heather for this wonderful uh, celebration. It's, it was very, it was unexpected. And as I already said it to other people, you know, in the Gera Hasidic uh, uh, group, we, we don't celebrate uh, birthdays. We, we, I think we are superstitious and we, we kind of, uh, we, we leave that uh, away. Uh, we leave it to the Reboilish to God. So, but first of all, I would like to help especially to thank certain people and Heather, of course, who organized it all. A, a great and absolute thank you for, for doing that. And to everybody else, to Mary and Telly, and of course to Richard and, and, and Myra and to Stephen for talking about me. But the most important thing that I want to tell you on my 90th birthday is that I don't think that this 90th birthday would have been possible if it wasn't for Dorothy, my great love of my life. Dorothy was the one who kept the children away from the horrors that I suffered from. You know, I had great nightmares and I, it's not easy to be married to a Holocaust survivor. And Dorothy was an absolute, she, she was an angel. She was somebody that could actually 
possibly alleviate uh, all the suffering that I had, all the nightmares, the screaming during the night while I was sleeping. And she was the one who went to the uh, parent and teacher at the, at, the, at, the, at the school, to parent and teachers. I never went to one of them. I had to work hard. We were very poor. And I, I struggled for quite a long time. It took me a long time to get over all these things. And if it wasn't for Dorothy, I don't think I would have been able to do that. So my greatest thanks goes to my loving wife, Dorothy Guter, who originally was her maiden name was Gelzer, a well-known family in Cape Town. And it was Beshert, it was really Beshert that in 1955, I met her in Jerusalem and I followed her to England and we got married there and we had our children and she supported me through all the time my difficult times, my happy times, and what's more, she made my life possible. And for this, I am eternally thankful. And I'm also thankful to all the people that came and listened to this celebration. And I would like to thank you all and wish you all shalom, bebracha, besindet and swantik to everyone. And thank you very much for those wonderful words. Bye bye. Thank you so much for those beautiful words, Stephen, and everybody else who spoke tonight. Um, Pinkus, we've got one last thing to share with you, um, which is that we have um, a, a video clip from, from the school that they would like to share with you. Wishing you a happy birthday. This is uh, Weinberg Girls High School. Uh, they visited the center recently and spent over an hour um, conversing with dimensions in testimony and meeting you, and then spontaneously decided to create this birthday gift for you. So I'd like to share that now. Happy birthday, Finkes. Um, we just got back from the museum. Um, we were told that it's your birthday soon, so um, we just want to say thank you so much for um, allowing us to interact with your AI program video. Um, we were really inspired by it, especially coming from a school with many different minority groups and speaking about how you need to accept people from uh, different cultures and religions. So thank you so much and happy birthday. Hi Finkers, I just want to say happy birthday. You're one of the strongest people that I know. You're very inspiring. Um, I've learned that you kept like your hopes up, that you will survive and I want to thank you for being strong and having faith that you will pull through. So thank you. Happy birthday! Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you so much for like sharing your story and that kind of thing. It's really helped a lot of people go through you what they need to go through. Inspiring and giving us so much of hope. Yes. Thank wow. you. Wow. Happy birthday. Enjoy your day. Yeah. I think it's, um, your story is phenomenal and it really touched my heart. Thank you for having the guts to share it with us and just um, for all the questions that you answered, it must have been hard, but thank you. Happy birthday, Pinkas. I just want to say, hearing about your story today made me feel very touched and moved, and I hope you eventually remember your sister's face. Happy, Happy birthday, Uwam Pinkas! Before I say thank you, I just wanted to say how incredible it's been to Stephen and to Pinchas, but to Stephen for so sensitively and so poignantly sharing your and Pinchas's beautiful relationship. It's been an incredible gift for all of us. 
on this, your 90th birthday, Pinchas, you have inspired us all so deeply, as you do on every occasion, every day, as you've heard in all three centers. And I've cast my mind back in preparation for this evening to many years ago when Tully, Richard, and I were attending a seminar at Yad Vashem, and we sat in the canteen with Stephen and talked about Stephen's latest project. And Stephen was full of excitement and telling us how Heather had this idea about what's going to happen, about future generations will not have the opportunity to engage with survivors. And she's come up with this idea. And I once heard an expression all those years ago when Michael Phelps won all the races in the swimming pool at the Olympics. And somebody said, but Michael Phelps is from the future. And then we realized that Stephen and Pinchas are from the future. And Stephen told us and showed us on his little laptop a little bit about what they had planned. And we were incredibly in awe of what could be in the future, but never really processing that it was ever going to come into our homes, so to speak. And a few years later, you visited us in Durban and gave a presentation. And a few years after that, Stephen came to Durban and gave another presentation about this incredible hologram and Pinchas. And here we are in 2022, and Pinchas is in our. Um, in our centers in a really meaningful way, as you've heard from my colleagues and from all of us. What a blessing it's been for all of us to have you with us every day in so many ways and to have reached so many people and continue to reach so many people. And you wouldn't believe it that after all these months, we still get new questions and there are answers and new answers every single day. What a remarkable, remarkable project Stephen, you should be so proud. And Pinchas, you are incredible. We are incredibly blessed to have had this opportunity to share with you. It started as the idea of a celebration. And I think all of us will leave here feeling uplifted and yet inspired. Thank you all so much for every, to everybody who's been part of putting it together. But to those of you who've given us the inspiration this evening, and to you, Pinchas and Dorothy, for your beautiful relationship and to your beautiful family. May you enjoy many, many more years in good health, surrounded by your family and those you love. Thank you all for joining us. Good evening. <laughs>